Hi, welcome back to another Surgery Tip Clip. Today, I'd like to talk about one of my new favorite feet, the clear curved foot. And I've been working on a new Surgery Tote Bag out of my favorite Surgery Tote Bag pattern. And I decided I wanted to change things up a little bit on the side panels and create circles. And I have just the right foot for the job, and it's the clear curved foot. It's a little short foot that allows you to turn corners and go around deep curves very easily and maneuver the, um, the machine and the foot for that. And I'll show you on this one, I did some just gentle curves and um, little arcs and straight lines. And this is where I wanted to change it up on my newer one. And I'll show you those panels that are all stitched out. I haven't got the bag together yet, but soon enough. But I've also used the clear curve foot or just even the standard clear foot, the metal one, for a few other things. And one of those is facings. I have um, a facing on the inside of this tunic that has a pretty deep curve to it. And the front curve is even deeper and I can do a still shot of that. But the curve foot allowed me to go around very easily. And I heard a great analogy for that. And somebody said that with the standard foot, it's like turning a bus around a city corner. And with the short little curved foot, it's like turning a sports car around a city corner. And I thought that was a great analogy and it is absolutely true. So I am going to show you a fun little workaround that I figured out for doing um, small circles on my machine. Now, some of you may have an extension table that has little holes in it with um, a, a pin that goes into those holes that allows you to do larger circles. But if you don't have the extension table, I'll give you an inexpensive little quick workaround for that. And I'll show that to you when we go to the machine. So um, we'll give you all of the setups also. And I will tell you right now, one thing that you do want to do when you're working with circles is if your machine allows you and has this setting, always drop the presser foot pressure to the lowest setting possible. Uh, mine is on the left side of the machine. Some machines have it right over the needle area on the top of the machine. Check your manual for that. Um, chances are you have it and you may never have even known you had it or ever used it. But for this particular technique, it's a very handy setting to have. And another little variation I did on the settings was I changed the differential feed and I lowered it down to the lowest setting possible. And the reason for that is it keeps the fabric nice and flat and it doesn't tend to kind of puff up and dome up in the middle. So let's uh, do a little look at my panels that are stitched together and we'll talk about the foot itself. Let's take a look at what else we'll need to create our circles. We've got our clear curved foot and you'll want one of these little flexible rulers that are very, they're small and they're very inexpensive too. Um, they're very lightweight and easy to pop a hole through with a thumbtack. So you'll need your thumbtack and you're going to put it in where you want to have it. And then just put a little piece of tape across the ruler when you get it onto the bed of your machine and align it as you'll see when we do go to the machine for the whole setup and the technique. Here are my two side panels and you can see that I've sewn the seams for the front and back side panels together before I have attached them to the rest of the bag panels. This is a little change in the construction order and I'll make some notes about that when I put it on the bag itself. But I wanted to show you the circles and the reason I changed that up was so that the circles would cover both panels and there wouldn't be any interruption in the design. I'm just going to move it along here for you to see. And you can see how nicely those circles came out. Now, on the turquoise 
circles I used a narrow cover stitch and I have 12 weight decorative thread in the chain looper and serger cone thread in the center and right needles it doesn't matter which needles you use this is for the narrow cover stitch you just might want to check your manual to see if there's a preference for your particular machine and on the smaller circles I switched out the turquoise 12 weight for a lavender one and uh, that again it's 12 weight in the chain looper went down to one needle for the chain stitch on that but in order to get these really small circles and get a really nice smooth arc on the circle in general that's where the clear curved foot comes in and it's just great so let's take a look at that next let's take a look at the star of the show the clear curved foot I've aligned it with the standard and standard clear feet and what I've done is I've put the little bar that attaches to the ankle of the uh, foot on the machine in line with each other so that you can see exactly how it differs in dimension it's a little bit shorter in the back I'd say maybe about a quarter of an inch or so but it is definitely shorter in the front by about probably three-eighths of an inch and that's something to be aware of um, as far as differential feed goes but that's also the reason that it makes this foot so maneuverable because it's a little shorty foot it can uh, whiz around those curves and corners and hug the edges of say facings or pocket bags that um, and make it very easy to get a nice result on that without your loops hanging off or going askew on your stitching itself but because it's shorter in the front it also does not cover your front feed dogs completely so if you are working on something that requires a change in your differential feed say that you were doing something with gathering and going around a curve or something like that uh, you would really want to test it first on some sample fabric to make sure that you could get the results that you want the front feed dogs are the ones that change speed when you change your differential feed setting and because this foot is shorter and doesn't completely cover the front feed dogs you may not get a true read on that differential feed setting so the ticket for that is to definitely test and make sure that um, it all works but for my particular application with the circles it was perfectly fine I did lower my differential feed setting because I didn't want the center of the circles to poof up and create kind of a dome effect which it they sometimes can tend to do but um, anyway I just wanted to put that in just as a point of reference and information for you we're set up at the machine so let's take a look at how everything is set up I have a narrow cover stitch set up with the left and center needles. You might want to check your manual to see if it designates whether to use the left and center or center and right needles. On this machine, it doesn't matter. And I've got a 12 weight decorative thread in my chain looper and serger cone thread in both of the needles. Now, here's my fun little workaround. I have one of these very thin, uh, flexible, clear rulers, and I took a thumbtack and pierced it right at the three-quarter inch mark from the bottom, popped the thumbtack through, and then I used a piece of tape just to um, stabilize and uh, hold it, the ruler to the bed of the machine. Now, as I said, I've got this on the three-quarter inch mark, but that and that would be the center of my circle. However, that doesn't mean that the circle is going to be an inch and a half, twice three quarters um, in diameter, because what you want to do is measure from your tack to your rightmost needle, and that will give you um, an exact measurement for what your um, 
circle diameter is going to be when you multiply it times 2. And this is just about, oh, a hair less than um, an inch and 3 eighths. So uh, my circle will be probably a little over 2 and a half inches in, in diameter, I should say. So um, a couple of little tips on that. You want to make sure that the edge of the ruler right here is not touching your feed dogs and not in the way of your presser foot either. You don't want to do anything that's going to block or impede the movement of those feed dogs. I have my stitch length on about two and a half, maybe a hair shorter than that. And one other little tip I like to give is I bring my differential feed all the way down to the lowest setting, which on this machine is 0.6. It's lower than the end or one setting on machines. And the reason for that is it helps prevent the fabric in the center of the circle from kind of puffing up and making sort of a dome. It just keeps everything nice and stable and flat. So here I've got my fabric. And I have a, uh, just a wash away stabilizer on the top. I've got my mark, let me just show you, right here, for where I want the center of my circle to be. And you've already done a test on your um, sample fabric, so you've got all of your settings worked out. And so I'm just going to feel around and get that thumbtack right into that mark and press it down just like that all the way in and I've got my threads in back here and I'm ready to put my foot down and start stitching. So I just like to stitch at a fairly slow to moderate speed. I'm just going around in a little circle. So let's go around. And as I'm coming down and approaching those starting stitches, I'm just going to move those thread tails out of the way. The left one to the left and the right one to the right. And if you saw my how to end your stitching in the round without losing a stitch tip clip, you've seen me do this before. So let me just continue along. A few more stitches. And you can see it's perfectly aligned. This is so cool. And I'm only going to overlap one or two stitches. I'm hand turning my wheel to bring my needles up to the highest point. Again, you've seen this. I'm going to use my little screwdriver to pull those needle threads forward right here. And I think you remember that snip, snap, snip that I did. Here's my first snip. But on this one, make sure you take your fabric off of that thumb deck before you go to pull it or you may rip your fabric. And you're just going to snap or just pull the fabric off to the left and in back. And that will pull the thread to the other side and just do that final snip. My circle is all stitched, and as you can see, I've pulled the threads uh, to the opposite side, so they're on the right side. So I'm going to take a little hand needle. I'm going to pull off my stabilizer, take a hand needle, and pull those thread tails to the back, and then I'll tell you what to do about that little hole in the center of your fabric. I've pulled my threads to the wrong side. You can see the thread tails and I'll cut those away afterwards. And I've taken off the stabilizer, but you can just see a little bit of a pinhole here from the thumbtack. So you can either take your fingernail or the tip of a pin and just kind of coax those fibers right back into place again and it's perfectly fine. And again, it wouldn't even you wouldn't even see that at all if I didn't make such a dark pencil mark for the camera. But anyway, you can see you have such a nice circle. And it's such a quick, easy workaround. And again, wherever you put your thumbtack, um, if you move it farther out, you'll have a bigger circle. So try it at home. Let me know how you like it. And have fun with circles and the clear curve foot. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
and that way you won't miss a stitch. You'll receive a notification when I posted a new tip clip. And as always, if you have suggestions for a future tip clip or any questions, send them along. I love hearing from you.